We of course have just had E3, and one of those things that was revealed by Microsoft at their E3 conference was of course backwards compatibility for the original Xbox, but it seems their plans actually might go beyond the Xbox platform. My name's Amata, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, we're here to discuss Phil's comments as he seems very keen to bring both original Xbox emulation as well as Xbox Game Pass to the PC. Now he was asked by PC Gamer if Microsoft had any intention of bringing original Xbox emulation to the PC platform, and his answer was simply yes. But thankfully, he didn't just leave us hanging with a one word answer, he did actually have a fair bit to say. And he said, quote, Emulation is hard. Xbox 360 specifically is a power PC chip emulated to x86, which is difficult. It's a little bit easier when you have a fixed spec. When you think about Xbox, Xbox One S, and Xbox One X, and if you think of the variable specs of the PC space, so you're talking a fixed spec PC emulator and then moving it over to a run on PC, so there's a lot of work there. The original Xbox is a little bit easier because it was an x86 chip it was running on. So basically, what he's saying here is that Xbox 360 emulation will be very, very difficult to do, or at least more difficult to do than the original Xbox, but original Xbox is a lot simpler for them to bring over to PC. Now, he isn't guaranteeing anything here, this isn't an announcement, but it's a good indication that it could happen and may well happen in the future because, you know, he is the head of Xbox at the end of the day, so I think this is a fairly safe show in for some point in the future we're going to be getting these things. So, he was also asked, as I said, about the Xbox Game Pass, which as you probably know is a $10 monthly subscription that grants you access to a library of Xbox One and Xbox 360 games. And he said, quote, I've said I want to bring Game Pass to the PC. The team doesn't love it when I pre-announce things, but I definitely want to bring Game Pass to PC. We don't have the deep catalogue of games on PC that we do on console, so I've had some pushback from the marketing team that, well, it wouldn't necessarily be the best feature right now because we won't have enough games, but I just want to start. So I put a lot of pressure on the team to go get enough content lined up to do something on the PC and then make sure we have a long-term commitment to build. So basically he's just saying that at the moment he's obviously getting pushed back because there are enough games to make it really worthwhile as a library of games. You know, if you only have like five games, just for example, you can kind of see the issue that you might have in terms of like selling this to people. You've got to think about you know the brand and all this other stuff when you know when you're working in a big company like Microsoft. But it seems like he's really pushing for this to happen. Now I would prefer to have some sort of Xbox 360 emulation or whatever you want to call it on PC from Microsoft that's outside of the monthly subscription. You know, $10 is not exactly cheap, and obviously when you combine it with all the other subscriptions that a lot of people have, like Netflix and Amazon Prime or whatever, they start to build up after a while is my point. So I personally would you know, like to just be able to rebuy an Xbox 360 game for PC, if, even if it's much cheaper at like, I don't know, $5 just for example. That would be cool, and obviously it would open up a huge possibility of games coming into the PC that we just didn't have. Or, and probably will never have, like, say for example, the original Red Dead Redemption. Just throwing that out there. That would be awesome. The thought of playing that again, but on PC, definitely makes me have some hype. Now, most likely this would be on the Windows Store, which is probably going to be a bit of a sort of negative point for a lot of people. But I think if they were to improve the Windows Store, then I think most people will be happily using it just for this, if nothing else. And it does seem Microsoft are listening regarding the Windows Store, because he also touched on that. A lot of people were hoping, I think, for a mention of this at E3, but obviously they had a lot to show, and not really a huge amount of time to show it in. Their conference was definitely fully packed, so I can definitely understand why they didn't. But uh, he did say, quote, we've got more work to do on the Windows Store, clearly. I hear the feedback on that. I think what you'll likely see from us, the term I use, is one store, multiple storefronts. From payment install instruments to where all my entitlements are, you want one store on the platform, or at least one store, that knows where you are and what you own. Right now, our store has the disadvantage of being everything, from buying a book, to a movie, to a song track, to an app, to buying a game, and relative to my experience on GOG or Steam or even Origin and Battle.net, those are more direct core gaming front ends we've got work to go do there. And he does have a fair point that they are selling more than just games, but I think there's an easy fix for that. Like, There's numerous problems with the store. It's frankly a mess, and it's way too difficult to find and install a game that you want you know 
the fact that mobile games are at the front page, but the latest games that have just come out on Windows 10, like just for example, Gears of War 4, are not is insane. You know, I shouldn't be seeing Cut the Rope next to Gears of War 4. That just doesn't make any sense. You know, even if when you open up the Windows Store, there's like a, you know, some nice menu where you choose the gaming section or the mobile section or the books and movies section or whatever. Like, that would be cool. And so I click on the gaming section, and all I've got there is PC games. I don't have any mobile crap. That's all in the mobile section. That would immediately help the store feel less cluttered. Because that's the issue, one of the issues it has at the moment, is that it's just way too cluttered and way too much of a pain to use. You know, when you're already asking people to come over from Steam, which for a lot of people is a big ask, you don't want to make their experience any more difficult than it needs to be. And Windows Store at the moment is definitely way more annoying to use than it has any right to be, to be honest. And obviously, the problems with the store aren't just these, they're also the UWP thing. I've talked about this numerous times, you know, especially when Tim Sweeney uh, decides to have a go at Windows for, oh, sorry, Microsoft, sorry, for their focus on UWP for Windows 10. And, you know, Phil definitely recognises that UWP has a lot of work to do if it's really going to be replacing Windows 32. And he said, quote, I get a lot of questions about why we wouldn't just natively support Windows 32. There are some issues with Win32 as a long-term app model. It's not really an app model. The idea of an app model wasn't really around when we, were from, when we went from... I was at Microsoft when we went from Win16 to Win32. I remember those translations. So I definitely think we have more work to go do. My view is we will gain UWP adoption when UWP is more functional than MSI plus Win32. And we're not there yet. But that's the path we're on. How do we go make uninstall, install, cleanliness of install, manageability for both consumer and developer, and the portability when a developer wants to take advantage of that, something that exceeds the ecosystem of Win32 plus MSI as a way to get things installed. That's when we'll see wide adoption. And yes, that would definitely help, but I think a lot of the issue UWB faces at the moment is public perception. Because all we've seen about UWP, or a lot of what we've seen, to be less hyperbolic, is a lot of negativity. For example, no mods. You know, uh, Gears of War Ultimate Edition was a mess when it came out. The Quantum Break PC version on Windows 10 was arguably inferior to that of the console due to the severe lacking of any real graphics options. You know, basic graphics options were missing. And obviously, the fact that you can't just go into the INI files and fix it yourself is a big problem. You know, there were definite concerns raised, and I think valid concerns raised, by Tim Sweeney uh, that Microsoft are going to turn Windows 10 into a closed-walled garden, which is not what we want. You know, the, one of the beauties of PC is the mods. It's the ability to tweak. It's the ability to customise. It's the ability to really dive in and fix those issues yourself. You know, Would we have gotten, just for example, the Dark Souls Fix mod if... It had been a really closed system. The answer is, well, maybe, but maybe not. We just don't know. It probably would have been a lot harder to do in a closed system. So they definitely have a lot of work to do with UWP, but I, I think it's nice to see that we're seeing some admittance of that from Phil Spencer. However, moving on from Microsoft to finish up, we have yet more Threadripper goodness to stay on the PC theme for this video, as we have some rumours about a release date. Now, you've probably seen the reports circling over the last few days that we are going to be seeing a July 27th release, but according to some new rumours from KitGuru and their sources, that's actually incorrect. We're going to be seeing a 10th of August release for Threadripper. And they said, quotes from what we've heard from our sources close to KitGuru, AMD should launch Threadripper around the 10th of August after moving the date from a late July launch. This is what we've heard through the channel, and if true, would mean we'll be seeing AMD and Intel square up once again, this time in the HEDT market. So basically, all of that means that Threadripper and Skylake X i9-7920X will be at Heads, they'll be directly facing off. AMD will be throwing down the gauntlet and challenging the Skylake X i9-7920. And of course, putting it comfortably ahead of the i9-7940X Plus CPUs, which are not coming around until October. So, I definitely think it's going to be an interesting battle between Threadripper and the i9 answer from Intel. Of course, we are seeing a lot of difference in terms of price as well. So, it'd be interesting to see the impact of... Not only Threadripper, but the battle between Intel and AMD in the HEDD space. 
I think if this is true, this is definitely a bit of a challenge, I think, from AMD to move it in the same month as Intel. So, a fairly lengthy video from me to move away slightly from E3 proceedings, although there will be a podcast most likely tomorrow from Paul and myself discussing who won and all that stuff. So do keep your eyes peeled for that. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Do let me know your thoughts and opinions, as always. And do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help out a great deal. And I'll see you next time.